All right. Uh, we left off last time. Our topic was take the HTML for the page. We're going to try to make sure that the HTML is complete as possible. We're then going to create a style sheet for the page. The style sheet, we're not necessarily going to worry about it being perfect. And here's why. The HTML is going to exist in several different files. So once we get our template created, we're going to clone that template for each of our specific pages. So if we cloned our template and we now have three or four pages, if we realize that we missed something, we have to go back and change three or four of those pages. And that's exactly when errors occur, when, when you forget to change one or you cut and paste wrong or something like that. So we're going to make sure, to as great a degree possible, as we get uh, the HTML template correct. The CSS, remember, everything's going to be in one CSS file. So if we decide uh, after a while that we don't like the font that we initially chose, we can just change it in one place. And, and is the change is reflected throughout the entire site. Um, we can even, and we're going to do this, we're going to do this to demonstrate some things in CSS, but we can even make several prototypes with different CSS files so that we can show our prospective customer what the alternatives are. And that way they can, they can make some decisions about whether they like one appearance or another. I should make that a requirement on the project, but I don't. Uh, so maybe you guys are lucky, because I think next semester when I make this assignment, I'll, I'll make it and I'll say have a couple of different um, um, versions of the, of the CSS. Anyhow, if I remember right, our wireframe looked like this. Probably still is here somewhere if I looked for it. But we said our wireframe would look something like this, where we would have a banner on the top of the page. Our navigation here. Our content area here. And our footer here. Now this is a pretty typical sort of layout for a small website. All right. Um, we could add extra things if we wanted to, if we had extra content sections, and we could uh, you know, rearrange some things or whatever. But this is a pretty typical layout. And um, we're going to go and we're going to create this. And our topic, if I remember, was Star Wars. So we're going to use that as the, uh, the uh, topic for this. Uh, remember, these three sections are going to be the same on each page. All right, so the banner on the top, the footer on the bottom are going to be changed, and also the navigation. Sometimes people think, well, if I have a navigation, do I show the page that I'm on? And I say normally, yeah, show the page that you're on. You can designate what page you're on several different ways, and we could look at that. But um, yeah, in general, I would show the page that, that uh, I would show in the navigation all your pages, uh, even the page that you're currently on. All right, so let's go and let's build this. I'm first going to try to build the HTML for this. Let me make a folder. And I will create using Notepad++. Stuff this on every page, our doc type, HTML tag. Our head section. Our end head. Our body. Our end body. And our NHTML. I'm going to go close the door because someone apparently is talking on their walkie talkie. All 
All right. I still see now even people that put stuff like an H2 up here or an H1 up here. Remember, stuff either appears in the head or the body. If it appears on the screen, it appears in the body. The only thing that we've talked about so far that appears in the H1 is the title. I'll make this a review site about Star Wars where I review each of the movies. So the title appears there, and when we create our CSS file, we'll put the link to it in here. It's the only thing that appears in the title, uh, in the head section. Everything else, the stuff that's going to appear in this part of the screen, stuff that appears in this part of the screen, all that is in the body. So. I'm going to create my main sections. And my main sections correspond to the sections that I had on the wireframe. I, I always call it a banner. It's, it's really the header tag, the navigation, the content area, which could be an article or a section, and then finally the footer. So I'm going to put my header. Nav, section, and footer. Now for a prototype, I would say Greek text is, is uh, acceptable, at least in some places. So I'm going to go and put some Greek text on the template so that if I don't have any real text, at least I have something as a placeholder. So I'm going to go out there, grab some Greek text. In your finished work, you shouldn't have Greek text. But in the prototype, that's acceptable. So I'm just going to grab a paragraph of Greek text. All right, my header, I'm going to put in Star Wars Reviews. I'm going to keep this simple. Keep in mind that I'm talking mainly about the process now. Um, some specifics like, you know, exactly what you put in the header and all that. You know, we've covered a lot of stuff about HTML. So if you want to put an image in the header, you're welcome to put an image in the header in addition to the text. A page where Mike Zeller's professor at LCCC reviews the different Star Wars movies. And again, what we're doing is, and this is a characteristic we defined as, as good design, that um, it should be obvious when you get to a page, and really any page on the site, what the site is about. So we're saying that right up front on top in the header so that there's no mistake what this is. You know, it's not about Star Wars collectibles. It's not the official Star Wars site. It's not anything like that. It's specifically this page where I review the Star Wars movies. All right, so you know what you're getting. All right. And again, we can put more content in there if we want, but this is what we'll go with um, here. Um, 
do keep in mind that you know you design your home page sort of be sort of to be your entrance to the world but the way that people access your site depending on how they access your site if they access your site via a search engine people may land on any of your pages so don't make it so that your home page is really clear and identifies what your site is about but your other pages don't all right because someone might end up on any of your pages as a starting point and you want it to be clear what your site is regardless of where they start out so I'll put that in there the footer I'll just put a copyright notice. I'll make my name an email an email link. And all we're left with is the nav. Now, we want the nav to be oriented horizontally. All right, that's sort of what the drawing shows. I don't think I drew the links on here. But sort of implied because it's wide and not very tall that I want the links to be oriented this way. Now, despite this, the... Uh, I didn't want it standing on its side, though. I always bump one of these things. There we go. Um, I want them oriented horizontally. Despite that, these still logically are a list of links. So therefore, I'm still going to make them a unordered list. Unordered because the order that I put them in really um, there's probably a few logical orders, but there's not like a hard and fast order that I put these in. So therefore, I'm going to create an unordered list. And if you're thinking, well, this isn't the way I want it to look, keep in mind that that doesn't matter because we can style it to look however we want it to. So I think I said I would have a link for the home page. Typically, our home page is going to have a name of index.html. That's not 100%, but usually for most web servers, index.html is defined as one of the possibilities for um, the name of the home page. So I'll, I'll go with that. That'll be our home page. should be an end li. And I think I said I would have four pages underneath the home page. All right, so this is what our prototype looks like. Usually I do this. I define the HTML. Why? Because the HTML specifies the content. And in particular, I'm looking at the content for the common sections. So those three sections, the header, the nav, the footer, are common on each page. This is going to be different on each page. All right, so. 
I'm going to save this in my folder. I'm going to call it something like template.html because this isn't any of the pages really yet. This is just sort of a template for the pages. And this is a HTML page, so I'm going to say template.html. And now I can go and look at it and see the content of the site and there we go looks plain but um, it is um, you know it is the content that I want now one thing I did notice that I messed up I think I put an at sign there that should be an ampersand to get the little copyright symbol. There we go. Um, there's a whole list of HTML special characters, uh, and they all begin with an ampersand, then something, and then they end with a semicolon. I don't know if we talked about these before or not. So if you have the need to do any of these, shows you some of the things that you can um, do. Like if you wanted to show the, the, the suits and cards, a diamond is ampersand D-I-M-S. A little triangle that points, a trademark sign. Um, some people wanted to show how to show a tag on their page, so I said use a do, uh, ampersand LT and GT, and so on the line. Symbol for yen, for pound, there's a euro in there somewhere, and so on. All right, anyhow. So, let's say that this is, is our content, and I have the content that I want in common on those pages set. Again, that's important because I want to make sure, at least before I start cloning, that the content that's on the uh, page uh, that's on my template is complete. Because once I clone it, I'm going to have to deal with making multiple changes if there's something wrong. Okay, so now I'm going to try to achieve this as a look. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to create my CSS file. And I'm going to just do something real simple at first. I'm going to say body background black color white. That will give us black and white, but reversed, the black background and white text. Which, depending on what you're doing, is as readable as, as white text on a, on, a, on a, or black text on a white background. The only thing I will say is, is some studies uh, indicate that white text on a back background can lend to a little bit more eye fatigue, so. But again, we're not going to stare at this page too long, so um, that's okay for that. Uh, I'm also going to change the fonts. What would be a Star Wars kind of font? You know, it would be real good if we were able to, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, able to determine what font that was. It's definitely a sans serif font. Let's look for font.
I know this has been posted before, but what is the font for? And of course, there's going to be 15 pages of people arguing and insulting each other. Let's see if we can find Someone says News Gothic 2. I wonder if we have that. You can download fonts and all that. You know what? We're just going to go with Helvetica. All right, and Arial. So, font family. Helvetica. Arial. On serif. Again, we pick several fonts because any given machine may or may not have any of the individual fonts. So if your machine has Helvetica, it will use it. If it doesn't, it will look to Arial. If uh, it doesn't have that, then it will look to your generic sans serif font. All right, so let's go and look at this. Um, I'll just call this main.css. And I'll put the link to it on this page. I'm a firm believer of doing just a tiny bit at a time, get it working, and then go on to the next thing. So I'm going to go and save this. Make sure everything's saved. And view it. And Interesting, that's not working. You don't think I did what? Oh. Background blacks. Okay, so this isn't working. So, we have to ask, and, and, and this is a good reason for doing this right off the bat. Um... Order doesn't mind. All right, how am I going to troubleshoot this? This is not a simulation, by the way. This is not me pretending to be confused. This is actual confusion, if you were wondering. So there could be two things that are wrong, all right? There probably could be more than that, but there's at least two, two possibilities of what's wrong. One is that this code is messed up. Two is I created the link the wrong way. Well, we'll find out, won't we? All right. <laughs> so how are we going to do that? Well, what if I bring this code in to here and get rid of the link? All right. This will tell me if the link is wrong and if the style sheet code is right. Because now if it works, then it was something about the way I created the link. If this doesn't work, then there's something about my CSS code. So I put that in there and save it, and that worked. So, something about my link. All right, fair enough. So let's go back here. Oops. Get rid of this. 
Well, there's another possibility. Maybe I saved it in the wrong place. Let's look. Nope, it's in the same folder as template. Okay, so that's good. Link. What are the attributes to this? There's a type attribute. And I'm going to Google these because I'm not very confident. No, it's the wrong kind of link. So I'm going to copy this in here. And there it's working. What I did wrong, who knows? You have to go back and watch the tapes if you want to figure that out. But we're back in business. All right? So I wanted to make I want to look more like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a width to each of the main sections. All right? And it's nice that I, ha I know now that the link is working, and I know that the style sheet's working, because um, if the link wasn't working before, I could be working on the style sheet, and who knows what was wrong with it. All right, so I'm going to go, and I'm going to say header. With, I'll say, 600 pixels. I'll do the same thing for the section the nav, and the footer. All right. If I want to center it, what do I do? Margin. 0px, auto. We've used this. I don't think I really talked about what it means. Margin is the space between things on your page. And you're the space between the edge of the, the window. So right now, my page is like, this and everything is like pushed over to the side I could give a margin of like a hundred pixels that would indent everything a hundred pixels but depending on the width of the window that wouldn't necessarily be centered if the window was very wide there'd be more space over here if the window was very wa uh, narrow there'd be more space over here so what I do is I say auto. Why are there two number or two values here? There are two values because you actually have margins in all four directions. You have a top margin, a right margin, a left, a bottom margin, and a left margin. Now I only gave two values. So what do they apply to? Well, it goes around clockwise. So Zero pixels is for the top margin. Auto is for the right margin. Zero pixels is for the bottom margin. And auto is for the left margin. So it goes around in a circle. There's an alternative way that I could say this. I could say margin left auto. margin right auto and I could do that just as well 
There's a number of properties, and we'll be looking at these over the next few days in CSS that you have sort of like shorthand properties for. And margin is one example. So I can either specify the margin just in the margin property, or I can break down the margin to top, left, right, bottom, by saying margin dash right, margin dash left, and so on. It doesn't really matter. It's just one of them preference things. Sometimes there'll be a need to do one versus the other. But you could always either say margin and then specify two of the margins, four of the margins, one of the margins, and it will go around in a circle applying them. So if we do this, we'll notice it should not look any different. Oops. And there we go. They're centered. OK. Now, don't like the color blue. Color blue is hard to read against that. So let's spend our attention on the navigation for now. So I'm going to go in my CSS and I'll keep this one do, done the other way, not to confuse you, but just to show you that this is the equivalent of that. So my nav, oh no, my links. Now, when you're designing the rule, we have to look at this and say, the color I'm going to make these links, do I want every link to look this way, or do I want some of the links to look this way? Well, they all look bad in blue, so I'm going to change all of them. So I'm going to change them, and I'm going to make the color Pound sign D D D D D D. That should be a very light gray, sort of a silverish. That should be probably pretty good. And I'm going to make um, the font size. One point one M. Just to make them a little bigger just in case that color isn't enough to set off the links. All right, that looks a little better. All right. Now, um, the other thing I would want to do is I would want to have the links oriented horizontally. All right. Now. The way that you can do that is by saying, I want to probably get rid of the bullet points too. So within the navigation section, I'm saying that because I probably don't want to do this to all the lists. I might have lists within, the, um, within the, the each page um, that uh, I do want to be bulleted. If I was having a list of the most horrible characters in Star Wars, you know, I might want bullet points on those. All right. So I'm going to define that only within the nav section do I want the UL to have a list style type of none. That will get rid of the bullet points. All right. The other thing I can say is I want nav LIs not to be treated like block tags. How do I know they're treated like block tags? They stack up like blocks. All right. Um, 
but instead I want them to be displayed like inline. All right, and so we have that. Now, I might want to put a little space between them. And normally would think, well, that would be the margin. So if I said margin right five pixels, it puts a little bit of space in between them. Now, I might want to make these a different color or do something with them. I could do something like this under a hover. I could say color black. background white. That will again just give a little bit of visual cue that there's something different about these, namely their links. So if I put my mouse over it, we get that. So that makes it clear. All right. So Basically, we did what we set out to do for this first version, all right? Um, and now again, if I looked at this and I said, yeah, I'm happy with it, all right? I could then start cloning it, but I better be real sure that everything in the common code is uh, the, exactly the way I want it. So in other words, is my header is my navigation? Are these really all the pages? The section, well, that's going to be different on each page. So I'm not worried about that being correct, because there's only filler text there anyhow. And then finally, the footer. Let's say I look at this and say, oh, LCCC, that, there probably should be a link there. There should be, probably should be a link to Learning Community College's um, um, website. So I'll go in and change the header so that LCCC is a link All right, so now I'm happy with it. Now I can start cloning. Well, the CSS, we could probably improve that. Well, I'm less concerned about that, right? Because the CSS, um, I can always change, and it will be changed in, in, in one place only. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make clones of this, and I'm going to call them the things that I call them. So um, let me close out of this. Close out of this. I'll go and copy, paste, 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 paste. Call one of them index. Call one of them originals. Call one of them prequels. Call one of them sequels. Call one of them other. Is that called other or others? Call it other. Good. And now I'm good to go. 
So now I can go and edit these and make them each their own page. So I'm going to go in and at this point I can get rid of the template if I want to or I can keep it around. I might move it out of the directory because it's not really going to be part of the website. It was just a, a step. So I'm going to go and edit all these guys in Notepad++ and I'm going to put the code that's distinct to each of these pages. So for example, on the home page I'm going to get rid of my Greek text paragraph. I'm going to put an H1 home page. And I might put the actual text for this. Remember, at this point, we're talking about the prototype. So if it's not 100% finished, that's OK. All right. This is a page of reviews of the different Star Wars movies. On the other page, I'll say besides the basic nine movies, there are others like Clone Wars. What was the name of the one last year? I don't know. All right, because this is a prototype, this one will just leave with Greek text. And this one. I think I forgot one of them. Oh, originals. Yeah, I forgot to edit originals. On this page, we review. First three movies released. And now, boom, we have ourselves a prototype because I can bring this guy up. Here's my home page. Make sure we've saved everything. There's our home page, the original page, prequels, sequels, others. So we have a prototype. It's not complete, all right, um, but it's good enough to show the user what, uh, you know, if we were developing this for someone, if we had a sponsor or something like that, it's good enough to show them what it basically looks like, how you navigate it, what the basic look of it is, how you, again, how you navigate it, I'm repeating myself. And it gives them a sense of what pages are going to be there. And at least some of them are a little more complete. Again, the, you know, this one, um, you know, maybe I would have completed this page a little bit more if I was actually doing a prototype, say what the three movies were, and maybe give a little description or something like that. But this is a prototype. And again, people can go and look at this and criticize it and say, I like this, I don't like that. All right? Now, um, what we're going to do next time is, I don't think I'm quite done with this one, because uh, I want to I spiff up the, the design of it a little bit, all right? So I'm going to go through and I'm going to add a few 
new things to this, just to demonstrate some of the additional things that you can do with CSS. We're going to spend a lot of time over the next class, a uh, few classes, talking about how to style the main sections, uh, the main block elements, the, he uh, the, the header, the nav, the section, and the footer. We're going to study how to lay those out on the page. Because right now, all our pages have been from top to bottom. All right, we're going to do things like putting borders and margins and padding and positioning those elements to make our page look however we want. So we'll do several versions of this page on Wednesday, uh, and we'll look at it. The nice thing is, is because everything relates to the appearance of the page, we should not have to touch the HTML at all. That's the content. The content's going to be the same on all these pages. But we're going to make different versions of these. And again, the nice thing is, is we could show these versions to whoever we're developing the website for, and they could tell us, yes, we like it, no, we don't like it, or whatever. So next time, we'll simply spin a whole bunch of different variations on this site uh, uh, to, to um, see all the different things that we can do as far as a layout. All right, uh, we'll see you up in lab.